Hello, my name is David Cole and I'm Technical Director of uh, Sunfield Penstock Solutions and I'm here to talk to you today about the trouble with penstock valves. Ah, a penstock valve. Well, that's quite a difficult question to answer. Um, a penstock valve is an interesting term because it's a generic term and you can find it in the uh, Oxford English Dictionary and it, it, it regards a device that's used to control a flow. Um, what's happened uh, a, a lot of times is these valves are used for stopping a flow when generally they're actually used for controlling a flow where there is large flow uh, capacity and large volumes of water. Penstock valves has become a generic term that's been used for many years as a pollution containment device um, and I think a lot of the civil engineers now specify it. It's almost like um, a little bit like a hoover. If you mention the word hoover it's a vacuum cleaner but the word Hoover became a brand name and so was the word Penstock. So what Penstock has become is a, a generic term that's used as, oh, anything that needs to control a flow, we'll stick a Penstock in there. Um, the danger is when you've used that word is you, you've opened up to the fact that if I place the word Penstock onto a, into a building schedule where I've got a design, I can go out and buy a simple Penstock device where actually what I'm looking for is a pollution containment device. Okay, well, a penstock valve to me is a, such a generic, such a huge amount of different types of products available. And we actually use the word penstock in our, in our, for our business because that's what our product is. It could be used as a penstock de type device, to flow control device. But that's the problem, is what you've got is people take a penstock valve, which is a generic term, and turn it into a pollution containment device. But it actually has got a leak rate and it actually is quite a slow, uh, moving device even when you put mains power to it to actually turn them up and down when these valves get quite la large they can take several minutes to operate which isn't always a very easy thing to do um, so what lots of companies have used for is they've taken a penstock valve and they've used it for pollution containment and it's actually the wrong product there's quite a few different points with a penstock valve that we need to, to go back on one of the ones is ultimately the first type of penstock is a simple manual wheel device and we can fit a actuators to them which are 415, 230 volt powered units so we've got to get mains power to them. But when you're looking at a pollution containment system I think it's really important to look at what you're actually trying to achieve. A pollution containment system is likely to be called into action at the time of an emergency. So there's a lot of sites that have installed a penstock system, a simple penstock system with a wheel on it that somebody goes and operates. Then you've got to ask yourself the question, so this factory's on fire, um, and my penstock valve is across the road, down the river bank, at the end of the site. So who goes to operate a valve in, in the case of an emergency? This factory's on fire and you need to be able to go and operate a valve when really you should be evacuating staff and knowing where people are. It's the last thing you're really thinking about. So when we look at these other devices, when we look at the way they operate and the way they work, we have to start looking at the, the functionality of this equipment. So biggest fundamental problem is they leak. So we've got a valve that potentially was designed to hold back huge volumes of flow, I mean massive volumes within the water industry where we've got a continual flow of, of water through a, through a drain pipe, through a sewer. Whereas when we look at firewater containment, pollution containment devices where a penstock is normally used in an emergency, there might be no flow whatsoever through that drain at the time we need to activate the valve. But once we activate the valve, it might just be a small trickle of cyanide or some other really nasty chemical that's just flowing through. And that valve itself can't actually contain that small flow. And it's quite often that when these products are uh, installed, there's no actual way of actually getting to them in an emergency. They're completely forgotten about and they can't be activated till several minutes or maybe hours after an incident's taken place. So maintenance of penstock valves. Um, it's quite an interesting area because if you look at, um, say, a, a typical 600 diameter pipe which might have been put inside and you've fitted a penstock valve to it, this then may be within a chamber itself and we as a business quite often go to service these pieces of unit and somebody has put the biscuit on top of that manhole chamber. That valve can't be removed without a completely removal of the actual above ground um, biscuit and digging it out. So when you come to maintain that valve, yes, they've got a very long uh, serviceable life. They were designed to control flow for many, many years. Um, there's not actually that much on them that can be removed to be repaired, to allow you to actually remove the whole device without major uh, maintenance work. 
Well, there's a few alternatives that I'd used for pentastop valves, and one of them is our toggle block um, device, which was actually developed by myself many, many years ago as, as an, an action to actually look at, I need a pollution containment device. I don't need a flow control device. I need a valve that sits alone, that can be easily fitted into existing infrastructure, um, that I'm not gonna need to completely remove a manhole cover to get it into the, into, the, into the drain. I can put it in a modular section. If it breaks down, I can take it apart and replace all the component parts. But its main important process is it must stop the flow, very simply and very quickly. So most of the products that we produce are gonna close a drain down within about five seconds of activation. It needs to be remote, so it needs to be that no human being needs to actually physically necessarily get there to operate this valve. It needs to be something that can connect it simply into the fire alarm system or, or, or operated by your mobile phone device. But it needs to be something that can be used and you can understand that it's worked and it's closed and simple, a simple device that can be used completely off grid because I'm afraid good chances if you've had a major incident, you might have lost your main power. It's quite often that pollution events happen at factories when there's a, a power failure uh, and processes fail and we get overfilling of tanks because valves fail to shut and we get overfilling of tanks, we get a flow off and that's when we need a pollution device to work, is when we actually have no power. So the devices we use and what we would say as an alternative is, is to use a, a valve that is standalone, it can't be reliant on mains power that comes from your facility, that's easy to operate and it must operate almost immediately from when you activate it or connect it into some sort of safety device so it shuts your drainage down as soon as an incident takes place not really really reliant on a human being walking to a site to turn a hand wheel or press a button. Well this is quite a difficult subject because there are hundreds if not thousands of industries in the UK that up until probably 2014 were recommended by the HSC and the regulator to fit a penstock valve. The problem is is that over time we've realized that that's probably the wrong product. It was too gen generic. And what you see now in guidance is they've changed the word. The word penstock no longer exists in most of the guidance notes that are there. And it actually asks you to fit a pollution containment device. What that's done is it's changed the process of how you should be thinking about it. You may have a penstock valve and you may have a system in place that says if we have a pollution event, we will close the drainage down using our penstock valve. But what you really need to be doing is you need to understand does the product that you actually fit, does it work? Is it fit for purpose? There isn't really much point in waiting for an incident to happen, closing a valve, having a pollution event, and then returning to the regulator in your defense and saying, well, the valve just leaked. Because you're going to fail, you're going to lose out, potentially because guidance has moved on. Something you might have fitted 10 years ago may not be fit for purpose in today's environment. And there's a lot of pressure on businesses now to actually be much more sustainable and, and really control pollution to the a very much a, a, an nth degree. There is no real sort of tolerance to a just a small pollution event. It's really the equipment you've put in needs to work and meet the, 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 the best practice guidance that are now in place. So any, anybody wanting to look at this particular subject, first thing is do our six point checklist. Understand regulation. Understand how that regulation impacts your particular business. Carry out a full risk assessment. Don't scrimp on anything. Step four, design the appropriate system. Deliver that appropriate system and install it. Monitor, maintain and document the system that you've installed and be prepared to change it and improve it as guidance improves over the years. So if you'd like to know more, please go to www.penstocksolutions.co.uk.